It's been a while since there was a good video game based on minigames outside of Nintendo's Mario Parties and WarioWares, and in some ways it seems like Nintendo's had a lock on minigame collections since the original Wii, where they were quite common among third-party releases and were often fairly bad. The concept is perfect though for a game that aims to look back on Atari's classic history while telling a story about generations and relevance. It's heavy stuff told in a light-hearted way, and the mix of quick moment gaming and overworld puzzling makes for a creative and unique way to celebrate Atari's 50th. It feels rare for something like this to get made, and developer Ologica keeps things nostalgic and experimental in just the right way. You'll get a lot of Atari history, fun facts, hidden secrets, and jokes, but you'll also reconsider the movement and core game loops of games like Skydiver and Slot Racers, as you practice bits of them to progress through an occasionally difficult series of boss battles. Using pixel graphics that really don't fit into any era of Atari, Atari Mania pits you against what are essentially fighting game style ladders where you have a certain amount of failures before it's stage over. Each minigame takes bits from classics and mixes them into a generally less than 20 second challenge. Sometimes you just have to move the right way, while other times you'll need to destroy or dodge things. Once I solved a minigame, I found it easy to repeat, which helped with progress, although not solving the minigames is of course the main frustration while playing. Failure is is frequently an option. The most frustration happens when you've almost beaten a boss but lose, then lose on the stage you get sent back to before you get the chance to try again. Having to repeat a 12 or more game stage after multiple failures is the least fun you'll have. However, I keep progressing and I'm currently in what appears to be the final battle against the somewhat evil Bentley Bear. The minigame gauntlets are the core of the gameplay, but there's a lot more to do as well. As the caretaker of the Atari Vault, you'll collect and use items, solve small mechanical puzzles that unlock further rooms, and collect posters, manuals, and more. The vault part of the game is nicely done, and it offers a lot of additional gameplay along with occasional breaks from the minigames. The arcade machines in each level allow you to practice the minigames and see the full range of options you'll face. There's also a smaller version of the minigame gauntlets where you tempt mice with cheese and engage in mini stages. I haven't discovered every mystery in Atari Mania, and it appears there's quite a bit to see. When all is said and done, the minigames are fun enough to make the gameplay work, and the attention to detail and addition of other things to do elevates the game into something more unique. Atari Mania is a cool way to muse about Atari's legacy in the year of its 50th anniversary, and that ultimately seems to be the point. I'm happy to report not only does Atari Mania play great with a classic controller, I found it to be the superior way to play. The modder worked fine, although I found the left stick less precise than using the classic. Sadly, the twist function isn't supported, which is a shame when you think about using it for the numerous paddle games being played. However, we've heard from developers publicly about the general difficulty in getting the classic twist to work, and I can imagine getting it working throughout dozens of base game permutations would have been overly difficult. I didn't find the lack of twist to be missing after the first few minigames. I really struggled with some asteroid ship movement, Gravatar in general, and Crystal Castles in particular. Sometimes I'd discover the real strategy was to try a different direction, or rethink what I needed to do. Sometimes progress meant getting an easier selection of games in a subsequent run. Atari Mania is currently available on Nintendo Switch, where it also got a physical release from limited run games, but the game is not available on PlayStation or Xbox. It is also on Steam and the Epic Games Store, Mania fits perfectly on the VCS, and I suspect the VCS audience is the most likely to enjoy the game. The game runs great on the VCS as well. I had a blast playing Mania, which is something I can rarely say about minigame collections that aren't Frobisher says on the PlayStation Vita or Work Time Fun on the PSP. Having knowledge of how to steer combat jets or shoot an outlaw actually helps here, and how often can you say that? One quick note that unfortunately Mania's release on the VCS was marred by a store outage that stopped anyone from buying anything for almost a week, starting a few hours after its release. Thankfully, I purchased the game just before the store crashed, and the store did get working this week. At $25, it's one of the more expensive games in the store. This video is probably enough to get you knowing whether the price is worth it to you. Atari Mania is one of the big tentpole releases by Atari this year as part of its 50th celebration, and especially since we have the 50th anniversary collection handling the actual games, it's great to see something like Mania get playful with Atari history. I thought the game felt fresh and new while also being a love letter to Atari gaming and the icons and fans who make it matter. Thanks for watching. I'll have videos about more VCS games in the coming weeks, including the exciting 50th anniversary collection, so subscribe to get these videos when they're published and like to spread the word about the channel. I'm also available on Facebook under Mock Duck Plays Games. Have fun!